Hey, it's Jessica DeMassa with WTF Health. What's the future of health? I am talking to the who's who of health tech and healthcare innovation. And today I'm catching up with Jean Drew and he is the founder and CEO of Clarify Health. Jean, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. All right, I am very excited to learn about Clarify. I feel like this is a very buzzy business that you guys have started here. You're in health data analytics, you're working with health systems, working with payers, working with life sciences companies. Mm -hmm. But I want to hear you know, from you, like what do you guys do over there at Clarify Us? Introduce us to the business. The way to think about Clarify is we've brought together one of the largest ever patient data sets and put the equivalent of a Bloomberg terminal on top of it to enable self-service insights for providers, payers, life science companies to more quickly be able to improve patient journeys. Okay, that's th that's a great like boilerplate statement there. I love it, and I think what's interesting about it is that I mean we know we know a lot about that about you, but I want to dig into the details mm -hmm. specifically about the analytics piece of this because I think we all kind of go along and are like, oh yeah, AI, and we're gleaning mm -hmm. these insights and big data lake, blah blah blah. But let's pick apart the pieces of it. So start first with the data. So biggest data set you said. Where is this data coming from? So the data comes from multiple sources. It turns out in healthcare, there's lots of back office type uh, businesses that process data. So you have claims processors for claims, you have lab companies that get lab data, you have all of the social determinants data that a bank might get for uh, things like credit scores. Okay. Turns out all of that is now stitchable together uh, using what's called tokens or tokenization. So Datavant or Health Verity are companies that are known for helping to enable the well, data market. Okay. Yeah. And then you guys are using that whole data platform and you've got your own sexy analytics that can happen on top of it. So talk to me about that piece of it. Love the question. <laughs> the best way to understand it is to think about a layer cake. Okay. And uh, the initial layer, just as you said, is data. Then the second layer is intelligence, okay. and the third layer is workflow. And then th every good cake has candles. <laughs> so <laughs> the candles are the business applications that you end up selling to your customers that they end up using. So at the data layer, yes, absolutely. If you have 10 to $15 million, you can go and buy lots of data. The question in though is though, can you link, clean, normalize it so that you have the refined fuel to go into your second layer. In that second layer, the intelligence layer, that's where you want to create your insights. So how fast is it? Mm. And how precise is it? And the, what Clarify does is the speed of the platform is faster than Snowflake. And the precision comes from the fact that unlike most others, we've built what's called a grouper. Well, a grouper is the healthcare word for a ledger. Okay. Uh, what do ledgers do for blockchain or for banking? They help you to organize data much more quickly. So just to give you a concrete example. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, exactly. Let's say you're looking for patients with congestive heart failure with certain social characteristics that might be on a particular drug. In an ideal world, you'd like to say CHF characteristics drug, press a button and click, click, click. Yeah, there it is. Three or four seconds later, there's your 35,000 patients. Well, that's what you get with Clarify. With everything else, it tends to be dirty data, Excel or Alteryx, and maybe I'll come back to you in six weeks with a spreadsheet dressed up in Tableau. Ooh, nobody wants that, mm. no. Well, the British have this expression, you've just put lipstick on a pig, that's kind of the equivalent. <laughs> okay, <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Um, so, okay, so you guys are helping, do, you're doing this faster, you're doing it in a way where it's actually, um, not lipstick on a pig, it's actually meaningful intelligence that's coming out of it. So how are your clients using it? So the way the clients use it, for example, take the business application we call Clarify Networks. The business problem they're looking to solve is how can we pick and choose the best PCPs and specialists in any part of the country. Ideally, what they'd want is a very precise score that's adjusted for the difficulty of the patients have seen, so case mix adjustment. What we enable is for their own analysts to be trained on the platform and within days, like someone on a Bloomberg terminal, have access to the most precise scores so they can pick and choose which doctors to put into these networks. The impact's astounding. It used to take two to two and a half years to build networks in a very manual way. Now it takes a few months. 
Wow, that's incredible. And like that's just one of the things that somebody can do that's on the platform, right. right? Give me another example just to kind of bring it to life. Another great example. Let's say that you're a pharma company and you'd love to have greater diversity in clinical trials. What you have to do is find sites with more diverse patients. That's what HIPAA says you've got to do. Because we use so many social determinants in our understanding of patient journeys, we're able to, again, in seconds, say, hey, here are the sites for this particular condition that have more diverse patients to recruit. And so you can much more quickly say these investigators should be in our trial if we want a more diverse trial outcome. Okay, and I understand too you're getting into value-based payments now. Talk to uh, me about how that works. Sure. So. We really see that the future of healthcare needs to move from fee-for-service to fee-for-value. What has gummed up the process on the commercial side is that one of the key steps, figuring out what bonuses and penalties people get, people have been using Excel spreadsheets to figure out the bonuses, and so it's incredibly cumbersome. The second step is trust. The physicians are saying, hey, if you're going to measure me to determine how I'm paid, I need to trust that you're adjusting properly for the types of patients I'm seeing, for the type of work I'm doing. What we have done is automated all of that so that it's more trusted in terms of understanding performance, and you load in the value-based contracts, digitize them, and automate the process of coming out with more trusted uh, bonuses and, and payments. All right, let me hear a little bit about the business. Let's transition to that real quick. Sure. All right, so I'm curious to know, how do you guys get paid? Like, is this like, a, do you guys get, uh, is it like a software as a service kind of thing? Like, tell me how you guys make your money. I mean, of course it's software as a service, right? Because <laughs> that's what everybody wants these days. Yep. So we typically sell in one of two ways. Usually we start with individual business applications because we go to a business owner and we say, hey, wouldn't you want to build networks faster? Wouldn't you want to more quickly identify where there's waste to go after or better trials? And the business owner says, yes, yes, and yes. Uh, yes, <laughs> and I'm not getting that today. And then what eventually happens though is somebody in IT says, hmm, clarify, you're over here, over here, and over here. Can maybe we have a more Holistic, holistic yeah. discussion about maybe you could become more of an enterprise analytics player. And that's what we see happening is the world is moving to, just as it has in other industries, uh, the advent of enterprise analytics platform for hospitals, payers, and life science companies. What's your mix of clients in the hospitals, payers, life sciences companies? Sure. What's your mix? So the mix is roughly, by revenue, 50% payer, 30% provider, 20% life sciences, and it's a total of about 75 customers at the moment. That's pretty awesome, good. And then who do you guys compete with? Because I mean, you mentioned like uh, enterprise analytics players. I mean, there's some big names that pop into my mm -hmm. head, but who are, who are you competing with? Sure, so from the old guard, it would be Optum, Premier, IQVIA. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of some of the newer names, People often ask us, oh, how do you compare to Innovacer, Health yeah. Catalyst, um, and others like that? The difference is this, is I think of them as helping customers to stitch together their own data, so the piping for their own data. Whereas what Clarify and to some extent Komodo do is we can bring in their own data, but we are known for bringing together a massive external data set. And that means then when we walk in, we can immediately say, hey, would you love to learn some insights about you? And they say, well, how are you pulling that stunt off? And we say, we have your data already. How does that go over? <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting. After a few quizzical looks, they, they start asking the business questions that they've got. Yeah. Can you show me who are the good physicians? Can you show me this specific physician? Can you show me these kinds of patients? And the minute they start seeing the insights, they light up. I love that. It, it feels like magic even when you start talking about <laughs> it because I've tracked this conversation about health data and analytics for a while and it, it just it sounds magical. So that's pretty cool. I understand that you guys as a business are growing and you've acquired mm -hmm. somebody. So do you want to tell me a little bit about that? Love to. So we're incredibly excited to announce that uh, we've acquired Embedded Healthcare. So that's the company founded by Zeke Emanuel and Amal Navath uh, over at Penn. And what they do that is absolutely amazing is bring the latest knowledge in behavioral economics. So this is how do you actually get people to do things? What incentives do you give them? How do you prevent, uh, present information to them? So that more quickly clinicians and patients do the things that will um, help them. So one application is we talk about closing care gaps, but the sad truth is they often don't get closed. 
How do you present information so that people say, hey, I actually want to close those gaps. I'm going to make a better f referral. I'm going to set up the appointment with the right person. Um, I'm going to do their diabetic foot check today instead of, you know, lop five minutes off the visit. So that's the capability they bring, and it n it's a natural add-on to that value-based contracting platform because our vision ultimately is that you need to load in great contracts with the right incentives, mm -hmm. and then when a patient comes in, a pop-up should come up to say to the clinician, okay, if you do these three things, a much better outcome will occur. And then if you want to close the loop, you then say, hey, as a result of doing these things, that's another $127 for this visit, and do you want to wait nine months to get paid, or do you want to get paid tomorrow? What was the strategy that pu has pushed you now into this value-based payment space, enough so to make an acquisition? Because I mean, I feel like I, I first knew you more on the patient journey side of things. So mm -hmm. what, was the, what was the business decision behind that? Well, ultimately in healthcare, there's two golden rules. Uh, figure out how the payments are gonna work and don't mess with the workflow. <laughs> and a at the end of the day, our belief is that if we are going to help every care journey to be optimized, the best way to do that is to enable the payment models that are gonna enable that to happen. And then the second one is to make it super, super easy for clinicians to do the things they need to do because ultimately clinicians really want tr three things, a great outcome for their patient, their time back, yeah. and then also to be rewarded for the yeah. work that they're doing. No, this sounds wonderful. All right, last thing for you. What's next for you guys? I mean, uh, you've raised like more than $170 million by my ca last count. So like what's, up, what's, what's ahead for, for Clarify Health? Great question. Number one is we need to execute against all of this, okay. right? <laughs> so a little humility is good in healthcare. The second is uh, you will see us more actively involved in life sciences. Okay. The patient journey insights that we have are particularly helpful in the clinical trial space. And we believe that there's a need to have a more holistic patient-centered view of real-world evidence. Mm. Uh, and so you'll see us play more in that space. Ooh, I love forward. the real world evidence space. Mm -hmm. That it seems to be like the thing that is popping this year, don't you think? Uh, I would agree. Okay, great. We'll leave it there. All right, we'll leave Super. it there. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for stopping by. It's a pleasure to hear about your business and what you guys are doing. Congratulations on the acquisition. Thank you so much. Great really ad, it. a great Thank ad. You. All right, Thank that's you. John Druin. I'm Jessica DeMassa. Thanks so much for joining us. For more interviews with the who's who of health tech as they are changing the way that we do healthcare, check out my YouTube channel over there at youtube.com slash WTF Health. Thanks for joining us.